2004 Equatorial Guinea coup d'état attempt. The 2004 Equatorial Guinea coup d'état attempt, also known as the Wanga coup, was an alleged coup attempt against the government of Equatorial Guinea in order to replace President Teodoro Abangna Mbasogo with exiled opposition politician Severo Moto, carried out by mercenaries and organized by mainly British financiers. Equatorial Guinea has vast oil and gas reserves. One U.S. official called it the new Kuwait. Prosecutors alleged Equatorial Guinea's opposition leader, Severo Moto, was to be installed as the new president in return for preferential oil rights to corporations affiliated to those involved with the coup. It received international media attention after the reported involvement of Sir Mark Thatcher in funding the coup. Summary In March 7, 2004 Zimbabwean police in Harare airport impounded a plane which flew in from South Africa with 67 alleged mercenaries on board. On March 9, 2004 Nick Dutoid and 14 other South African and Armenian men were arrested in Equatorial Guinea on suspicion of being the mercenaries' vanguard. The alleged plot leader ex-Special Air Service SAS officer Simon Mann, was arrested with two colleagues near the runway while waiting for arms to be loaded on a Boeing 727, carrying three crew and 64 former soldiers recruited in South Africa. The majority of those alleged to have been the mercenaries planning to carry out the coup are based in South Africa and ex-members of the 32 Buffalo Battalion, a notorious special force unit that fought for the South African apartheid regime. The marketing manager of Zimbabwe Defense Industries, Hope Matthijs, said in court that Simon Mann had paid him a deposit on weapons worth $180,000 100000 in February 2004 and indirectly linked Mr. Mann to the alleged plot by saying he was accompanied by a South African, Nick Dutoit, the leader of the 14 men arrested in Equatorial Guinea. 4. They insisted they did not want any paperwork, Mr. Matthijs added. Legal sources said Mr. Mann had cleared the deal with CGI's managing director, Chinga Dube. But news of the deal apparently leaked to the South African authorities, who tipped off Zimbabwean intelligence. Their arms requisition included 20 machine guns, 61 AK-47 assault rifles, 150 hand grenades, 10 rocket-propelled grenade launchers and 100 RPG shells and 75,000 rounds of ammunition. Mr. Mann, 51, said he wanted the rifles, mortars and ammunition to guard JFPI Corporation-owned diamond mines in volatile parts of the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was alleged that those arrested in Zimbabwe made a stopover in Harare City to buy weapons and expected to join a team in Equatorial Guinea to overthrow President Abang. Nick Dutoit, the leader of the group of arrested in Equatorial Guinea, said at his trial in Equatorial Guinea that he was recruited by Simon Mann and that he was helping with recruitment, acquiring weapons and logistics. He says he was told they were trying to install an exiled opposition politician, Severo Moto, as the new president. Prosecution and media evidence in a letter from prison on March 31, Simon Mann told his wife, Amanda, and his legal team. Our situation is not good and it is very urgent. They the lawyers get no reply from Smelly and Scratcher who asked them to ring back after the Grand Prix race was over. We need heavy influence of the sort that Smelly, Scratcher, David Hart and it needs to be used heavily and now. Once we get into a real trial scenario we are fucked. David Hart was ex-Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's unofficial advisor during the miners' strike and served as special advisor to Michael Portillo and Malcolm Rifkin in subsequent conservative administrations. Scratchers thought to be Sir Mark Thatcher and smelly Eli Cowell. Wanga list of the financial backers The names were allegedly on a so-called Wanga list by James Kershaw then 24-year-old, who was believed to have acted as Simon Mann's accountant. He entered a witness protection scheme after voluntarily surrendering to police on the advice of his lawyers. He was given 24-hour police protection because of assassination concerns. The list, 
said to have been handed over to South African police by James Kershaw and another former colleagues of Mr. Mann, who have turned state's evidence, has been seen by The Guardian. Johann Smith Intelligence reports. In December 2003 and January 2004 two separate highly detailed reports of the planned coup were sent to two senior officers in British intelligence and to Michael Westfall, then senior colleague of Donald Rumsfeld. The documents were from Johann Smith, a former commander in South African Special Forces and an internationally renowned security analyst who has been an occasional advisor to President Teodoro Obengma Mbisogo. In a statement by Smith given to lawyers representing the government of Equatorial Guinea, he says he began hearing rumors of a coup in both Equatorial Guinea and Sao Tom in November 2003 from two ex-soldiers of the 32 Buffalo Battalion who told him they had been recruited for a coup by Nick Dutoit. Because I was continuing to work in Equatorial Guinea with government, it was not in my interest that there be a coup d'etat. I therefore wanted to warn the Equatorial Guinea authorities. I also considered it my duty to warn the authorities in US and England because some of their nationals might be killed. I submitted a report in December 2003 of what I had discovered to Michael Westfall of the Pentagon in Donald Rumsfeld's department. I expected the US government to take steps to warn Equatorial Guinea or to stop the coup. This was also my expectation as regard the British government, which I warned through two SIS people I knew, and to whom I sent the report by email, also in December 2003, to their personal email addresses. The report named several major players arrested in March and now on trial for their involvement in the failed putsch. Smith said the group had hired two fishing trawlers to operate off the West African coast, despite the fact that all but one member of the group had no seagoing or fishing experience. The report concluded that the commercial fishing operation was a front for the movement of men and arms for a coup. The report also mentioned the group's connections with the Equatorial Guinea opposition leader Severo Moto and warned that any operation would pose a threat to stability in the region. Second report. When Smith began to get more intelligence of the plot in January from his former military colleagues who were working for Nick Dutoit's South African firm, he sent another report to the Pentagon and SIS marked strictly confidential. After preparing and sending my December report I received further information. I put this in a second report, which I sent by email to the same people as the first one, Michael Westfall of the US and to British SIS contacts. Documents seen by the Observer revealed that by the end of January, the Foreign Office was being told. According to the latest planning, Carlos Cardoso ex-South African Special Forces soldier would, on his return, recruit a total of 75 ex-SADF South African Defense Force members, mainly from within the former 32 Buffalo's battalions and Special Forces ranks to launch simultaneous actions in STP and EG. These actions are planned to take place in mid-March 2004 the alleged plotters were arrested on March 7 en route to Equatorial Guinea. Knowing the individuals as well as I do, this timeline is very realistic and will provide for ample time to plan, mobile, equip and deploy the force. Smith, who claims he has received death threats since the plot was thwarted, said there was no response from British or US authorities to his warnings. The only thing that happened was that the U.S. authorities froze the Equatorial Guinea money with the Riggs Bank in USA.